and uh, I am from uh, AFRINIC, the uh, regional internet registry for the African region. Um, my background is also a lot in CCTLDs, which is one of the reasons why uh, uh, some of the guys from uh, the CCTLD organization said, um, asked me to moderate this, uh, this workshop. So welcome to IGF 2013 and to workshop 92, which is about the social role of uh, country code top level domains. Um, this morning we have uh, a series of panelists and uh, we're also going to have a presentation from a center and uh, Peter Rost here about um, um, uh, a survey that uh, two of the regional organizations did and uh, he's going to tell us a bit about the results. And then we're going to hear about um, uh, .ng Nigeria, the CCTLD and how they're faring in their role as a, a, a you know, a social uh, instrument in their country. Then we're going to hear also about um, Hong Binju from .cn. So from NG, there is Mary Uduma here. She's uh, their CEO, um, CEO of uh, Nigeria Internet Registration Agency. Uh, then we're going to hear about Oscar Robles from .mx, Peter, uh, Martin Paterka from uh, .cz is going to talk to us about how to use the internet but also a little bit more about uh, his own CCTLD and what they're doing uh, in country. Then we're going to have Andre, where's Andre sitting? Oh here, there, <laughs> hiding. <laughs> Andre is going to tell us about the role of CCTLDs in establishing a neutral expert platform for national internet actors. And then we're going to hear about um, a little bit about, uh, you know, industry and what they're doing with CCTLDs. And we have Sarah Felve here from Google to tell us a bit about that. And uh, of course, we'll have a, a question and answer period. And uh, I'm happy to just, uh, you know, without further ado, start the meeting with um, Peter's presentation on the survey. Peter? Good morning, everyone. My name is Peter van Rost. I'm the general manager of Center. And together with uh, LACTLD, which is the regional organization for the CCTLDs in Latin America, and the center membership, which are 50 CCTLDs from the European region. We, um, we started a survey in preparation of this, uh, this panel discussion. And our goal was to have um, just a, a sound basis of um, the essential statistics on what the markets, the GTLD and CCTLD markets on a national level look like, uh, what CCTLDs um, are involved in, in terms of corporate social responsibility, and who is using the CCTLD and why they are using the CCTLD. It's only four slides, so um, I want to point out that for us this is just um, a, a starter to, for any follow-up uh, studies, um, if possible, on a wider scale than what we've done, done so far. So for this one we had the participation of 50 CCTLDs, uh, especially from the African and, Ape and Asian region, uh, we would welcome participation in the further studies. So this is the, uh, the first one. This is an overview of um, how the national market looks like. And what we asked the CCTLDs, what is your market percentage? And what is the GTLDs market percentage? Um, obviously, these numbers can change dramatically over the coming months and years. Uh, so, but this is the status as of the first of October this year. Five CCTLDs um, had a market share between 0 and 25 percent. Nine were between 25 and 50 percent. And uh, 17 between 50 and 75, and 16 between 17, 75 and 100. So in total, uh, 61 percent of the CCTLDs had a um, 
a uh, market share that was larger than 50%. These, uh, these stats are, of course, based on uh, the information that is available on the, uh, on the national statistics for GTLDs, which are sometimes hard to come by. So, as a result, three of our members were quite unsure of what their market share looked like in their country. Next slide, please. So I use the local CCTLD um, for the large majority of the participants. Um, it was very simple what they found in their studies of their local market. Their registrants use it to underline their national identity. Um, I think it's, uh, for me it was a surprise because I thought that the second one would have been rated higher, um, but only nine uh, of the participants uh, indicated that trust or security was the uh, main reason. Uh, why the local CCTLD was used. Other reasons were use of local language, reliability of having a domain with a local operator, and then um, a combination of all the above uh, was the last one. Next slide, please. Who is using the local CCTLD? Um, the question we asked was, we gave them a list of 12 um, providers of services, infrastructure, education, government, um, and we asked them in those categories who was using uh, the local CCTLD. And I mean, the, the results are quite convincing. Um, for almost any of those categories, with the very strange uh, exception of the tourist office, which uh, scores lower than the others, in particular, if we realized that underlining the national identity was the main reason to have a CCTLD. But um, in all the other categories, um, the CCTLDs are uh, being used um, by um, universities, administration, hospitals, banks. Why is that important? Well, because obviously those um, organizations and those sites generate an enormous amount of traffic, which will help significantly in underscoring um, the importance of the CCTLD to the local public, uh, and will also help in the uh, recognition of the local CCTLD in a market where uh, in a few years from now we'll have more than a thousand top level domains. Next slide, please. This is the last one. Um, when we asked the CCTLDs how they, um, they work together with their local community and um, in what type of activities they were involved that supported that local community and uh, the local languages. And so almost all of them uh, are involved in initiatives that develop uh, the internet in their region. 12 out of the um, 50 CCTLDs that participate in the study um, support initiatives that create local content, in particular in an IDN environment, uh, I should say. And then, um, given the context that, context that we're speaking at today, uh, 20 of those support local internet governance initiatives, most of which feed into regional or the global IGF. So that's it. I hope that provides you with a basic summary and an idea of uh, what the market looks like and how CCTLDs are working uh, based on the statistics from Europe and Latin America. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, so, as Peter said, this is a, a survey that was done from uh, for the European and Latin American um, CCTLDs. Um, coming from the African region and knowing the place pretty well, I can say that um, um, if our TLDs, country code top-level domains, are to grow, I guess we'll see somewhat of the same pattern. We're not there yet, as Mary will tell you. We have quite a few challenges with country code top level domains in the continent. Um, and Mary will tell you a bit more, and we can you know, talk about the rest later. Mary? Sorry? Um, actually, why not? Yeah, okay. I don't mind questions now. Peter? Uh, my name is Don Hollander from uh, the Pacific Internet Partners. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, just so I get a better sense as to, to the results and how to, th to think about them. Um, these were results that were, 
were answered by the CCTLDs, right? So you were asking the CC, yeah. you, you, you were asking the CCTLDs why their uh, registrants were using them. So how did they know? Because most of them have done their research. Um, that research might not re necessarily date from the last couple of months, but most of the CCTLDs have surveyed their registrants, have worked with their registrars and surveying registrants um, to get a, a very thorough idea of what the okay. usage of their domain looks like. Thank you very much. And and um, they, that would also be true for the who's using the local CCTD, CCTLDs and my, based on my experience in the Pacific. Um, you have different uh, domains used for the website of the organization and the actual email that the staff use. So in some places in the Pacific, they may very well have, for example, in Samoa, a .ws website for the a government department, but all the staff use Gmail. I don't think that we have stats to that level. Um, what those numbers were based on were basically just pretty easy to figure that out. Um, by uh, research by the uh, CCTLD itself. So if you know the top three banks, it's easy to figure out what domains they're using. Thanks, Don. And yeah, we can talk about that later because I see a lot of that in the African region. <laughs> Mary? Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Uduma and um, my organization is Nigeria Internet Registration Association, the managers of .ng. I want to take off from where the question you just asked about um, not using .ng by government organizations. And I'll tell you what we have done in Nigeria. We have to carry out a campaign that said switch to .ng with the government and um, the government took it up from there. And uh, as of today, there's a written circular that no government official should carry any card without the dot ng dot gov dot ng so is working that way for us and uh, for my short presentation is just to tell us what we've done in nigeria and um, um i'm the president of the association the association is um, is um, an it or internet community led based organization and uh, is not a profit making organization and for that um, um, when we talk about dot ng we're looking at nigeria a peculiar nation filled with innovative and intuitive people richly blessed with substance to grow develop and sustain ideas that have become entrepreneurial giants in the hands of men because they are turning men are turning uh, the the, the, the tool called the internet to making business and making money. And um, w we are also helping in uh, trying to convince our businesses to be online. I'll, take, I'll tell you more about that as we go on. Um, in terms of relevance, the specific local needs that our CCTLD is addressing is relevance. We want our people to be relevant online, offline, and uh, to take pride in using the dot ng what is relevant in the modern age that finds me wanting for placement that is what what is it we have multi stakeholder holderism in uh, action because in our own situation the the dot ng uh, is made up or the nira is made up of the government represented by National Information Development Agency. We have the ICT associations. We have the civil society, those from the media, the youth, and also from the academia. So all of us make up the, the organization that manages that. Then there's the local content issue that we, we, we believe that um, .ng is the basis for developing local content and that uh, we create job and uh, we end foreign exchange because we, we are not restricting our .ng to just Nigerians. And um, 
we conserve also the foreign exchange. A crucial driver will look at to show that we are crucial driver in the development of local internet community and infrastructure. We have organized annual annual projects such as local internet content forum, getting Nigerian businesses online. Uh, that we are working with Google. Google has been helping so much in um, driving that. Um, that's what we call Shopee in Nigeria, and we gave free domain names. Um, Nigeria is trying to give create job, and um, they're giving awards to 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 uh, business ideas. And the president of Nigeria promised the awardees that they will receive, they will have domain names, and they will have uh, websites. So we participated by giving out five thousand domain names free to the awardees, and uh, it's still available for those that want to take it up. And during the independence, we also gave out 50,000 free domain names. And um, I told you about Switch2. We are campaigning Switch2 to .ng. And also, we have implemented, um, uh, we, we are the secretary for the uh, Nigerian um, NIGF, or Nigerian IGF. So um, we, we also have um, MOU with Exchange Point. And we, have a, we are also creating access to infrastructure. So in that way, we are trying to, to create a, a form or a platform where people will identify with the domain name. All right. Um, we have the e-inclusion. Um, if you look at the picture there, the picture is uh, our Minister of Communications, industry stakeholders, some of the faces, maybe you know one or two of the faces there. Well, because we are the secretary for, dot NG, for NGIGF, so these people are part of the, the okay, thank you. <laughs> these people are part of it. We are, we are, we are doing e-inclusion. Uh, to ensure inclusion, we, we use our multi-stakeholder platform to promote our Ministry of Communication Technologies approach to domesticating e-governance using the switch to .gov.ng. As I told you, that is it now um, like a law, like uh, the head of service of the federal government of Nigeria has sent out circular to all civil servants in Nigeria that you must carry .gov.ng if you have to give some, anybody your complimentary card. And, uh, the representative of that uh, government is here, even with us. The other things we've done is that the National Council on Communication Technology is made up of people from various um, uh, ICT organizations. And um, um, we anchored the, the a uh, IGF. And we have also established the Kwekalu Foundation, where we are going to encourage the youths to be able to 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 take up a business in the uh, in the in the in the internet uh, uh, space. Uh, at the last IGF, we did a workshop for the youth, and uh, and it was uh, rewarding. Then we are non-discriminatory because our NG registrars are from everywhere in the world. You can be a registrar with NG. We are also a member of the um, of child online protection. So we, we also participate as our social role, our responsibility. So the real CCT ben benefits are there's pro potential branding advantage for each country where the company is present. There's increased organic traffic, conversation, and value. And there is business value chain as well. We have improved local search opportunities. We allow for in-language URLs and allow for multi multiple ranking opportunity in the search results. We contribute to the GDP of our country, and we build local content, and we own local content. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, we're going to go straight to Hongju, Hong Binju, sorry. <laughs> who's going to tell us about the um, capacity building under, under .cn. Thank you. 
Uh, my name is Hong Bin Zhu. Uh, I come from China Internet Network Information Center, which is the operator of .cm. Uh, actually, my topic today is, uh, as listed on the uh, PPT, is not about all about the capacity building. It's a general question. Why is CCTLD so special? Um, actually, uh, when we think about CCTLDs, many of us uh, in this industry will think, think that CCTLD are most of the CCODs are uh, actually the incumbents in the industry. So we have, uh, uh, maybe some of us have a larger uh, consumer basis and uh, we can actually, to, to a certain in extent, to lock in users. But uh, actually, I, I don't think so because uh, we, we, our users uh, use CCODs not only because we are larger or we have a larger uh, consumer basis, but we are, uh, but uh, because we are more accountable. Uh, as you can see in this chart, uh, in at the very beginning of uh, .cn, we, we started from uh, 1997. Um, we used to have only 4,000 domain names, uh, but at that time uh, there are a lot of uh, .com. But uh, actually, uh, after 10 years, uh, we we come to um, almost uh, one, uh, uh, ten, 10 million domain names under .cm. It's uh, quite a lot. Yeah, uh, as you can see that we managed to survive in the competition with uh, uh, global incumbents. And uh, this is because uh, we have a, a localized ad advantage and we also have a, a more accountability uh, Concerning uh, how we can, uh, how we deal with the anti, uh, the phishing websites, and how we deal with uh, various uh, cyber crimes online, and uh, uh, also how we perform a constructive social role in the in the internet industry. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the other point I want to make is that CCTLD is also a best role uh, to perform. Uh, the, uh, as an uh, exporter of the best practice in the industry. Uh, for example, as you can see that we have uh, developed a comprehensive IDN solution uh, within this, uh, for, for, for the local users. Uh, actually, mm, we have developed uh, various standards uh, which meets the local user's expectation. Uh, let, me, let me explain in more uh, details. Uh, as you can see that in China, we have two uh, writing system, which is simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. And uh, Chinese users uh, see this kind of two writing system are almost the same, uh, but uh, s there are minor differences uh, when you writing it. Um, sometimes uh, people can be confused about it, but actually we have uh, developed a comprehensive IDN solution to deal with this problem and uh, we can, uh, we, we even have uh, proved uh, international standards to, uh, to mitigate potential uh, issues or, or abuse related to IDNs. Um, actually, this is, I, I think is uh, uh, one of our uh, best practice for the local community and uh, we wish this kind of practice can be absorbed by the new GTLD community. Uh, because I think it's uh, meet our user expectation. The other uh, best practice we have uh, done is uh, also within our local community. We have is established an uh, organization called Anti Fishing Alliance uh, uh, in Chi of China. Uh, this alliance actually uh, can uh, uh, actively uh, so soliciting uh, so solicit the. Uh, phishing websites online, and uh, they can uh, provide a, a shutdown service for the people who actually have uh, commit uh, ha have uh, uh, facing some cyber crimes or have facing some uh, online cheating or some something like that. Uh, if they are facing that kind of problem, they can report to APAC, and uh, they can have uh, some kind of. Uh, a solution to mitigate that kind of uh, bad consequence. Uh, next, next slide, please. And uh, 
uh, one central point I want to make is that CCTLD is so special because uh, we actually we are actually in the center of the internet ecosystem. We uh, have a, we, we are we, we can leverage the relationship uh, between different kind of stakeholders. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we can cooperate with government, academia, and uh, various stakeholders. Next slide, please. And. Uh, uh, our target is uh, mainly public interest ori oriented, and uh, we have done a lot of capacity building uh, works, uh, especially with the Southeast Asia countries. Uh, and uh, Indonesia, uh, people from Indonesia restry have come to our restries to do some training program and the capacity building uh, cooperation. And uh, the next slide, please. Uh, but I don't think. Uh, if we remain the same, we can face the future competition. We also need to make changes. So uh, at right now, I th we see that new utilities are coming, but it also brings us uh, many opportunities, uh, which uh, actually transform our organization from an operational, uh, uh, ma mainly operational role, to a, a research role and a, a international relation uh, a more active uh, role in international relation. Actually, we can help new GTLDs to operate according to our best practices, and uh, we can help uh, the new GTLDs to uh, get close to the international community and uh, also the internet governance area, and uh, we can uh, use our expertise to guarantee they have a, uh, they, they make do things uh, according to the user expectation and the local needs. Thank you very much. That's all. Uh, Thank you very much, Hongbin. I think I would like to just, um, you know, for everybody, um, uh, uh, push some keywords out from uh, Hongbin and Mary's presentation. So, uh, social accountability. Um, uh, Hongbin is seeing some policy advisory role for CCTLDs, and uh, I would like people to kind of think about that so we can have a little bit of a conversation uh, for that locally, because I think it's really important to know that everybody is talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, the context of internet governance and, and policy uh, um, uh, proposals that can go to not only governments, you know, given the position that you showed of uh, a CTLD being uh, the center of uh, stakeholders practically at home. I think that's an interesting one. Thank you very much. And Ray? Yes. Thank you. Not Andre, <laughs> but uh, okay, this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Andre Kalesnikov. I uh, I'm working in uh, .ru, uh, CCTLD, which is Russian Federation, and uh, uh, <coughs> today focus on uh, pu public goods, uh, meaning in Ru that in Russia, like world worldwide, is a special non-competitive good uh, <coughs> residents can be effectively excluded from the use and uh, person um, and our uh, our domains must be available for everybody who's interested in uh, in, uh, in the domain name um, we are among uh, top uh, top 10 uh, country code uh, operators and uh, let me share some some of the uh, some of the ideas. Next slide, please. Okay. So, um, what what do we address uh, to our local uh, community and to our uh, local market? Um, first of all, we of course we do the job of uh, of the national country code uh, operator. But we also have um, a very uh, unique situation with IDN. With IDNs, we have the largest um, IDN CCTLD, um, which uh, 
which is about 820,000 uh, domain names, uh, still the number, number one uh, top-level IDN. Um, and of course, uh, we care a lot about the uh, universal acceptance uh, of, the, of the IDNs. And uh, we should say that there is no equal uh, treatment and equal acceptance of the IDNs, unfortunately. And we experience it, for example, in the, in the, in the absence of support of the full support of the uh, IDN email. But we do some work uh, in this area. Also, uh, we, um, we have a unique project uh, in a cooperation with uh, leading uh, Russian internet companies in uh, reading out malware and um, uh, taking care of the phishing sites, uh, basically phishing addresses. We have a large database uh, collecting information from the different sources. And today, by this date, it's, uh, mm, it's about uh, 1, 1.2 million bad addresses, including domain names of the second and third level. So uh, this is a very interesting project. So just started. We have a new resource uh, available online. And of course, uh, we do uh, a lot of evaluation of uh, legislation and uh, technical matters for, because the recent days uh, there's a big activity in Russian legislation field in terms of internet regulations. Uh, let me say uh, some of them uh, need a stronger technical uh, background and understanding to make the uh, law uh, technically implemented better than it is now. Next slide, please. Um, also, we do a lot of education and where is it uh, rising. Uh, for example, we have a very interesting project, uh, the internet game called uh, Govern the Internet. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a site available online and uh, the target auditorium is a uh, is a uh, graduate from schools, and uh, this is where people get their inter inter education about the internet, what it is, how it works, and it's kind of quiz like online game, and you can you can participate in that, and it's very interesting. Uh, we do local IGF, of course. This is uh, our traditional spring event. I think it's um, it's been like five times already. Uh, some of you. Uh, some of the faces I see uh, participated there, and it's good. Um, also, we help our, uh, our partners, uh, one of our companies who's doing the, um, who applied for the new GTLD called .dt, which is .kids, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, uh, project uh, to build a safer space for the, for the, for the children. Um, very interesting area of uh, and where we uh, heavily involved is a uh, uh, fostering agenda for the uh, uh, for, for for the guys for the judges and for the people who's uh, participating in uh, different courts um, to make uh, to judge it appropriately, uh, not just not violating the technical standards. <laughs> Let me put it like this. And also, we uh, of course we participating just last year was a. Local ISOC branch in uh, Russia formed, and we also do some uh, work in this area. The next one. So, the basically what what we do is uh, our main focus. Dot rep now is uh, to promote internet literacy because uh, this is a very interesting project. We we have uh, it's been applied for the uh, mostly to the outdoor advertising, but we want to move it uh, really deeper. We want to support of the email, and um, also we uh, with the uh, Russian Association of Electronic Communications, which is the largest uh, uh, union of the commercial companies. We also do uh, participated in fund fundamental public initiatives that really concerned the Russian internet economy. And uh, of course with sponsorship, we, we do a lot of investment into, uh, into public events, uh, forums, uh, educational initiatives, and um, involved in the, technical, uh, in the technical community work, and uh, run the public debates. So we are pretty standard uh, 
country code top level domain <laughs> manager like in many other countries probably will do we do the same the same things next slide please thank you Thank you, Andre. We're going to go directly to uh, Martin. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Martin Peterka, and uh, I work for CZNIC, uh, which is uh, .cz uh, uh, domain name registry. Uh, this slide, you can see some, some basic information about our association. What's important and uh, and related to today's uh, workshop is is our own nonprofit. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and uh, from our point of view, it uh, means that uh, all uh, profit which we earn from domain business uh, uh, give back to to the community. Uh, we do it uh, through a variety of uh, projects. Uh, uh, we run a projects. Uh, uh, from uh, hardware and, and software development uh, through uh, educational and uh, uh, security programs to, to cooperation at, at uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, here is a short list of them. Uh, I, <laughs> I will not des describe uh, all of them, but as uh, maybe a little bit unusual example, I try to introduce you shortly last of them, uh, how to use internet project, uh, which uh, is uh, focused to the general public. Uh, how to use internet is, uh, in fact, a series of uh, TV spots in advertisement. And uh, every of this uh, episode has about two minutes. Uh, we tried to use a modern design and uh, fun form. And uh, uh, we used the well-known Czech actor uh, as a guide uh, of this series. And uh, we try in, in a different topics uh, explain and educate uh, not uh, very experienced people, beginners at the internet, uh, uh, how to use it, uh, speak about new technologies, at, uh, et cetera. Uh, we started this project last year. Uh, during uh, summer, uh, we uh, produced uh, 40 episodes and uh, broadcasted them uh, during autumn. Uh, we use uh, prime time on uh, one of the three uh, major TV channels in, in Czech Republic, which uh, has uh, an average 30% uh, of share. And uh, we were quite successful. If, uh, if you imagine that population of Czech Republic is about 10 million people, uh, if we have uh, more than 13 million views on TV, it's, it's a good result on uh, some of our data. Uh, at the end of the year, we ordered a uh, public survey, and 35% uh, uh, of respondents of this survey uh, knew the series, and uh, most of them were really satisfied with it. So uh, we decided to continue with this project. Uh, during uh, this summer, we prepared the new 45 uh, episodes, and uh, they are broadcasted just now in, in October and November. Uh, now I try to show you a short video. It's uh, something like highlights uh, from our first season. So it's in Czech, but uh, we have a subtitle, so I hope you will enjoy it. So give, give me a second. So while, while Martin is doing that, I'm just going to talk about uh, one of the things that I'm seeing um, that is also somewhat of a pattern um, among the CCTLBs. Most of the time, it looks like they are um, not-for-profit organizations. And um, I would like to, later on during the discussion, have a few people tell us if there is anybody here who operates a TLB that is a a for-profit and uh, how it's going, for example. Um, you know, so we can probably compare a little bit. Um, I see a few industry people. Uh, we have one on the panel and, uh, you know, 
I would love to also hear their um, interest in country code top level domains and why they use them. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Dobrý den. Dříve si člověk četl zprávy pouze v papírových novinách. Poslouchal hudbu z magnetofonu nebo telefonoval přístrojem s kulatým číselníkem. Dnes k tomu všemu používáme internet. V počátcích internetu nikdo netušil, co bude za pár desítek let. Internet byl totiž použitelný pouze k výměně textových zpráv. V 90. letech se začaly objevovat první webové stránky. Dokonce obsahovaly i barevné obrázky, i když ve srovnání s dneškem působily poněkud komicky. V počítačích ovšem uchováváme ještě důležitější data než jen telefonní kontakty. Například rodinné fotografie. Dobře se zamyslete, co všechno máte uložené na disku vašeho počítače a jak by vás mrzelo, kdybyste o všechno přišli. Je. Yeah. Ve svém počítači si jednoduše vytvoříte složku a služba už se automaticky postará o průběžné zálohování jejího obsahu. Značnou výhodou je, že se k souborům dostanete z kteréhokoliv počítače, z kteréhokoliv mobilního telefonu nebo tabletu a to kdekoliv na světě. Rovněž se rozmyslete, zda budete odpovídat pouze odesílateli zprávy nebo použijete tlačítko Reply to All neboli odpovědět všem. Pokud na domlouvanou grilovačku nedorazíte, nemusíte to dávat najevo všem adresátům, z nich mnohé třeba ani neznáte. Pokud si dá někdo tu práci a chvilku bude hledat, může toho na vás zjistit docela dost. Od zájmů, názorů, přes vzhled, kamarády, třeba až po bydliště, zaměstnání a místa, která pravidelně navštěvujete. Pokud se rozhodnete kamarádům sdělit, že jedete na 14 dní na dovolenou, asi vám budou závidět. Uvědomte si ale, že dáváte najevo potenciálním zlodějům, že je u vás doma dva týdny nikdo nevyruší. Abyste si byli jistí, že jste skutečně na stránkách vaší banky, zkontrolujte bezpečnostní certifikát. Barevný nápis, který většinou bývá na začátku adresního řádku. Pak se můžete v klidu přihlásit svým jménem a heslem. Rafinovaným způsobem podvodu je tzv. phishing, neboli rybaření. Podvodník nahodí háček v podobě mailu, který vypadá jako od vaší banky a vyzývá vás k návštěvě internetových stránek, které také vypadají jako stránky vaší banky. Reálným nebezpečím je i tzv. podvodné přesměrování domén. I přes veškerou opatrnost se může stát, že stránky, které pravidelně navštěvujete, jsou falešné a vaše osobní údaje získají podvodníci. Dobrou ochranou proti tomu je používání technologie DNSSEC. Zjistěte, zda ji používá váš poskytovatel internetu a vaše oblíbené webové stránky. Případně se informujte na stránkách www.bezpečnédomény.cz Víte, co jsem teď udělal? Objednal jsem si nový kávovar. Dobrý den a děkuji. Ve skutečnosti si samozřejmě na dodání počkáte trochu déle. To nic nemění na tom, že nakupování po internetu je rychlé a pohodlné. Tohle znáte? A tak dál. Můj kamarád to neznal, tak jsem tu písničku stáhl z internetu a poslal se mu mailem. To jsem neměl dělat. Nedošlo mi, že tím porušuji autorský zákon. S obrázky, filmy nebo hudbou na internetu, byť k ním máte přístup, nemůžete nakládat libovolně. Každé dílo je totiž chráněno autorským zákonem a pokud ho chcete použít, měli byste to mít legálně ošetřeno. Věci, které se my musíme dlouho učit, dnešní děti pochopí během chvilky. Přesto nebo spíše právě proto bychom měli dbát zvýšené opatrnosti při pohybu dětí na internetu. Určitě bychom byli rádi, aby na některé stránky naše děti nechodily. K tomu slouží rodičovské filtry. Zadáním zakázaných adres nebo nevhodných slov si jejich pomocí snadno zamezíte dětem přístup na závadné stránky. Studují třeba vaši blízcí na univerzitě někde v zahraničí? Díky internetu si s nimi můžete kdykoliv zdarma zatelefonovat. A když si za pár sto korun pořídíte webovou kameru, klidně jim u toho můžete ještě zamávat. Registrace domén provádí tzv. registrátoři. Jejich seznam naleznete na stránkách www.nic.cz. Vodítkem k výběru toho nejlepšího může být počet hvězdiček, stejně jako u hodnocení hotelů a restaurací. Zaměřte se také na to, jaké doplňkové služby jednotliví registrátoři nabízejí. Až si vyberete, stačí jen na stránkách registrátora vyplnit jednoduchý formulář. Pokud si nebudete něčím jistit, navštivte stránky www.dobrádomena.cz, na kterých naleznete podrobné návody a rady, jak při registraci postupovat. U platby kartou bude bohužel vždy existovat nebezpečí zneužití. Zneužít lze i speciální karty určené pouze pro platby na internetu. 
Možností, jak se tomuto nebezpečí vyhnout, je povolovat každou transakci zvlášť. Řada internetových obchodů nabízí ale i další možnosti platby. Máli internetový obchod speciální účet u některé z bank, které provádějí platební transakce online, je možné využít přímou platbu na účet obchodníka. A máme tu nádherný obraz od Václava van Boha, vyvolávací cena 1000 korun. A 2000 korun pro číslo 37, 3000 korun pro číslo 16 a 4000 korun pro číslo 37. Tak to nedám. Takže 4000 korun pro číslo 37 poprvé, po druhé. V živých aukcích se většinou draží umělecké předměty za nedozírné ceny. Na internetových portálech, jako je Aukro.cz, iKub.cz nebo zahraniční eBay.com, však můžete nalézt takřka cokoliv. Když do prohlížeče napíšete webovou adresu, váš počítač se zeptá nejprve DNS serveru patřícímu společnosti, která vás připojuje k internetu. Pokud tento server zná IP adresu pro vyžadované doménové jméno, oznámí ji vašemu počítači a ten už se na ní snadno připojí. Pokud tento DNS server odpověď nezná, zeptá se jednoho z hlavních DNS serverů, kterých je na světě 13. A ten se zeptá zase dál, podobně jako v pohádce o kohoutkovi a slepičce. Nakonec váš počítač požadovanou IP adresu získá. Takže vám nebudu diktovat žádná čísla, ale rovnou adresu té parádní stránky, co jsem slíbil na začátku. Je to www.romanzach.cz Naschledanou. Sponzorem pořadu byl CZ My, zprávce domény CZ a provozovatel služby Moje ID. Thank you very much, Martin. That was very entertaining. Uh, we're going to go directly to Dot MX and uh, finish off the presentations because we don't have too much time left. So we can go into the question and answers period. We're good online, Bim? Well, thank you. Uh, let me try to give my view on or uh, our view on social responsibility from the TOTEMX, the CCTLD for Mexico. Um, first, as a general, many organizations uh, see social needs uh, as a trigger for uh, becoming involved and look for solutions in uh, social in these social needs. Uh, the, the 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 thing is. What could be the role of a regular organization in their local community, and what could be the role of a, of a CCTLD uh, within, the, within their local community? Uh, and the third question is, uh, could be any difference? Uh, I will try to give you an answer for all these uh, questions in my next slides, but the short answer, short answer is that yes, CCTLDs are different. They have additional triggers um, because we are part of a special ecosystem, not only the uh, regular organizations triggers for attend uh, social needs. Um, the initial responses that uh, uh, regular organizations have for uh, those social needs are uh, mainly philanthropy, uh, welfare support, uh, help to schools, uh, vulnerable communities, and all these kind of things. Uh, those those things are really good. Uh, it makes a uh, better uh, world and it should continue. But it has a small but. Um, it doesn't solve any problem or it's very limited uh, when it comes to solve all those problems. Um, still, it could be done but by someone else. Other kind of uh, responses from uh, regular organizations or even CCTLDs could be is corporate social responsibility, which is a wider um, answer or wider response uh, as the philanthropy with other uh, communities like uh, authorities, environment, uh, uh, local community, but also uh, the national community. This is it still good. It still makes a, a better place. I mean, a be it makes the world a better place uh, and it should continue. Um, but there might be something else that we, as a CCTLDs, we can do. Um, uh, still, this corporate social responsibility could be done by someone else. What's the thought uh, uh, on this um, by DotMX? Um, this is our, what we have done in the last years. Uh, we want first to make sure that uh, we address our most relevant goals. Uh, and I think, and we think, 
that uh, the main social responsibility of any sim single organization are uh, their mission, their vision. As long as they try to attend all those mission, vision goals, uh, they will uh, attending their most relevant social responsibility. Uh, and if we don't do it, no one else will. Well, someone else will, but after we fail, and we don't want to fail. That's that's the point. So. For us, that's our main social responsibility, to attend our goals. Mm, furthermore, we want to make it with the highest technical service and employee satisfaction standards. Um, we have to make it efficient, even though we are not for profit. We, want, we need to be efficient and we have to be sustainable. Once again, if we, if we don't do it, no one else will. Um, in the same, uh, or uh, at the same time, we want to spread internet principles and internet governance principles. Those are two different things. Um, we think that we do have a role. Uh, we are part of an ecosystem, first in a local ecosystem, in a very specific level with our, with our employees, then their families, then our community, then uh, uh, the country, and of course, uh, we are part of a global ecosystem called the internet and the internet uh, authorities and all these things. Um, we make contributions to organizations with, an specific with a, a specific role to protect those principles like the internet society, uh, not only the, uh, the global uh, internet society, but also the local chapter. Um, ICANN, of course, uh, we um, uh, help deploy a, um, um, accurate demographic and statistical uh, survey uh, annually uh, which is called World Internet Project, which um, it contains standard uh, measurements of uh, demographics on internet uh, together with some uh, countries. Uh, we have helped since, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago to develop, uh, to create uh, regional organizations like uh, LACTLD in 1999, uh, we were fo founders, um, uh, like LACNIC uh, in 2002, but uh, very involved in the early stages of LACNIC, uh, LACNOG, and other uh, regional um, projects. Um, and also we're funding uh, local initiatives uh, or the local initiative to uh, discuss internet governance uh, topics, uh, uh, attending and addressing all the internet governance forum principles like uh, uh, dialogue, uh, like a place to, to have a dialogue rather than conclusions uh, in a multi-stakeholder environment with no single um, strong uh, company uh, uh, sponsoring that event, for example. Uh, those kind of things that we want to uh, make sure that uh, it's happening in Mexico. So uh, our, um, our mantra on all these things is do what no one else will. Uh, do what no one else can do, or at least what no one else can do it better. Thank you. And now we come to our industry colleague, Sarah. So I'll be quick, because um, I think I'll be more of a wrap up and hopefully we can get to questions. Um, my name is Sarah Falvey, I work at Google, and you know one of the reasons why I thought this panel was really interesting is um, talking about CCs, I think it's really sort of the first way that people think about identity online. Um, it's the first way that everyone from the beginning of the internet sort of began thinking about identity online because when you see the CC, you automatically assume that the company or the person is from a certain region and that brings with it um, a certain set of values and, and things like that. At Google, we, we're obviously a global company, but we have Google dot whatever, registered in all of the CCs globally. And we do that because it's a way for us to, f to sort of serve local content um, to our users in the region where they are. Um, and it's important for us because it, it's a way for us to touch our users you know, where, wherever they are and, and sort of whatever, whatever they're specifically looking for. Um, and, you know, and I think we're not the only company that does that. And, and you know, this is it's a huge project for us. Um, going back to sort of 
you know, but one of the things that we do try to do is create this unified experience so that no matter where you are, if you type Google dot wherever you are, you, it's the same as if you type Google dot com, it's the same as if you type Google dot UK. And so one of the things that we've really been doing in the community is figuring out a way that we can create a unified experience across all CCs. Um, all the people up here have totally different perspectives in terms of what they're doing in their region and sort of what they're focusing on. on Andre talked a lot about sort of security and not all CCs are able to um, have a really high level of security and so what happens is, is that users will go to a CC and the first, and, and it won't sort of, the, the, res, the um, resiliency or sort of the resolvability won't be the same across all CCs and that's, that, that sort of creates a situation where users feel like there must be something wrong with the CC or there must be something going on. And so what we really try to do is work within the community, particularly at ICANN at the uh, CCNSO, to sort of share information so that all CCs and, and sort of users of those CCs are working together so that the CC remains resilient, so that we're sharing information so that you know, Mary, who's in, in uh, Nigeria, who's a volunteer, is able to have the same access to resources as, you know, anybody else up here. And that's really important because from a community perspective, CCs sort of need to work together because in a lot of sense, they are the first way that people think about accessing the internet, particularly in their region. And it's something that's very local. And so making sure that the entire space is resilient and working together, I think, is really important. And that's something that we've been um, changing our focus on a lot and using ICANN and the CCNSO group and other groups to share information um, and work together to, to share resources as well. And, and I know that we're not the only company that does that. Um, and so I th that's sort of really, uh, you know, kind of what I wanted to focus on. I think there was a little bit of discussion around or this may be a question around GTLDs and sort of what are the role of GTLDs going to be against um, on CCs and I think, you know, we were having this discussion yesterday and I think, C I mean, CCs are, are just, they're really great and they're really dynamic and you can do things with them that you can't do with GTLDs and, you know, there was a discussion earlier about many of the CCs are nonprofits, they're serving their communities, they're working with their governments, they're serving their local population and that's something that you're seeing a little bit of change, um, but in general, that's not that will not change. And, and I think that that's a really important thing to remember, particularly as we see an influx of new generic top-level domains, and it gets more confusing to navigate the internet. I think the CCs will be there as a sort of signpost and a navigation tool for people who really want to find local content. Thanks very much, Sarah. So um, we're going to start with uh, questions. Um, Emily, I'm just, not Emily, uh, Leslie. I'm going to wait and see if we have uh, anybody as uh, online from the remote moderator. One person. Do they have a question? Oh, OK. So they don't have a question yet. So I guess we can just uh, you know go through the room. Leslie? Hi, uh, Leslie Cowley, CEO of Nominet.uk and until quite recently chair of the CCNSO. Um, I'd just like to pick up on Sarah's comments. Um, I was really pleased to hear you say that CCs are great and dynamic, because uh, we always have been. Um, so it, but it's nice to have acknowledgement uh, that that's the case. Um, but more significantly, um, as chair of the CCNSO, you, you mentioned Google's participation in the CCNSO. I have to say, I haven't noticed any. Um, but you would be very welcome. You would be very welcome. I know that a number of us engage with Google on a national level. Uh, but in the CCNSO, I, I may have been out of the room, but I think I've missed you. So what was the, we, this is something that started at the Costa Rica meeting. So what we've... So what we've <laughs> so what we've been doing, and I I was I talked to my engineers before I left because I thought this question would come up, um, and, and I was right. Um, and 
what we've been doing, particularly with Warren Kumari, who's in the ESSAC, um, and we've uh, sent an engineer who goes by the moniker of MMB, um, and he came to the Costa Rica meeting, and we sent somebody to the Beijing meeting, and we've um, been using, I thought we've sent someone to one other meeting that's escaping me. So it's a relatively, n typically how we used to do it is we would say, oh, Fiji, your CC went down and it's been a huge issue for us. Let's work together to make it better. Oh, you need some resources or some servers. Let's see what we can do through the community and do it on more of a one-off basis. And that's typically how we approach the problem, which is fantastic, but then you can't share information around, so what was going on in Fiji and is there, are there things that we can learn from from that experience that other people can learn from. And so the Costa Rica meeting was where we started giving presentations on more kind of from the attack side what we're seeing instead of doing it more on a one-off basis. And that's a program that we're sort of trying to build out. We're obviously, there's more that we can do, and I think that's what we're trying to do. I think we're sending someone to the BA meeting I, as well. I think we've been on our first date, uh, and we'd, we'll, we'd welcome a more established relationship. Um, and, so, and certainly, um, very. I, I know Warren personally as well, and he's great, and he's great and dynamic too. Um, I just would suggest that it would be mutually beneficial to take that to a different level, yeah. and to not be too concerned about um, talking about individual targets or whatever. We're quite used to f having ways of dealing with that at the CCNSO, right. where without naming individuals, we can learn from each other's experiences. Yeah. Thank and you. Fiji was just an example. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. And I think um, from my own experience, Google is not the only organization that, is, um, that goes around asking, you know, CCTLDs to work individually with them. So, uh, you know. Um, we have a question there in the back. Thank you. Mm. We have a mic there. Could you Thank you. Could introduce yourself? Yes, my Thank name you. is Andy from Pandi. Pandi is uh, .id, uh, Indonesian uh, CCTLD. I, my question is, uh, the first question is uh, to Mary Udama and also to Sarah, actually. Um, last year, we have uh, also a similar program with you. We are cooperating with Google to provide a free domain. We provide 100,000 free domain, for one year free domain for the uh, SME, SME, the small media enterprises, but you know the retention. I mean the the users who renew the the domain is only about ten percent, yeah. and also the program not uh, reach until a hundred thousand, but only about uh, twenty thousand. The 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 SMA registered, and and then the retention uh, the next year when. The, uh, renew is only uh, ten percent. So, uh, what about your experience in uh, Nigeria? Okay. And the, the second question, actually, to Hongbing from China. Yes, mm. I am attending your uh, capacity building program in Augustus. Yeah, uh, this is a good experience for for us to learn. Uh, from China, who, uh, I think this uh, already a success to manage the CCTLD and also to get engaged among us, the CCTLD in Asia. And um, I believe, uh, I know you, you are also the, have the, the IDN, the Chungkok. Uh, Chungkok is a China, China, China characters. And uh, I think this is, uh, mm. uh, okay, I'll direct to the question, how, how, is, uh, how many percent? In of uh, internet users in China uh, can read uh, China char character compared to Latin character. So, I mean, uh, you know, you get the question? Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay, Mary, go ahead. Okay. Um, <coughs> when we clocked 50, uh, uh, in Nigeria, as an independent country, we offered 50 domain names for free. And the bad news was that only 10% was taken out of the 50. Um, it could be, well, communication issues on the internet, internet access, also cost of internet access because it's a bit high. 
And uh, so it was only 10% that was taken. And out during the renewal, we had another 50% renewal out of the 10% that was taken up. Um, the one of the uh, Google online, getting Nigerian businesses online. Um, because it was free, a lot of people rushed for it. And when it was time for renewal, and uh, because the renewal was still done by Google, we saw renewals. But I think the next time that they are going to do the renewal by themselves, I will expect that it will be the same thing as we experienced. That's what we have experienced, that renewal. But those that come on their own to register domain, the, the .ng domain name, we have had about 80% renewal uh, experience. So that is it. When it is free, yeah, people will rush, take it. But when it comes to renewal, um, as for the one we have given to Nigerian government project, we believe that the government would also do the renewal. So we may see 100% renewal on that. So um, our experience on renewal, though we don't have too many domain names registered, we still have less than 50,000 domain names because the, the dot .coms, dot, dot .net, and dot .orgs, they were all there before we started. So we're doing a catch-up thing. But I think I want to, I want to greet the courage of, uh, of our colleague from the uh, CZ. That video was, is it? Yes. CZ, mm. right? I think we are going to do the same thing. <laughs> so that we'll tell people and uh, it will encourage them to take up uh, cctld.ng. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Before, before Sarah or Hong Kong speak, I would like to just say that, um, so in Peter's presentation of the survey, he said that 61% of the CCTLDs that were surveyed had, um, they all said they had more than 50% share of their national markets. But it, it looks like it's, it's really, really hard in general to get to, to even that mark. What, what is the issue? What is the issue for CCTLDs? What is it? Is it a question of people not identifying enough? Is it a question that when they compare them, for example, to uh, you know, uh, uh, generic TLDs, they find that those are, is it a question of uh, uh, easy access to new GTLDs? Is it pricing? What is it exactly? Anybody has thoughts about this? Do you guys have the uh, Hong Ping? Yeah, that's a, a very excellent question. Um, most of the time, the CCTLD penetration responds to a mm -hmm. level of development of the country on different uh, areas like the uh, IT uh, and communications. Uh, Mexico is like a 60 or 70 place in the uh, level of uh, IT um, uh, deployment, uh, if you ask to the World Economic Forum. Uh, and uh, uh, the low level of penetration of domain names answer to all those things. Of, of course, the, the, the wealthy of the country is one of the issues as well. Uh, but then uh, you have to leverage with the um, communication and with the uh, advantages that you offer as a, as a CCTLD uh, with the strong links to your local community. Um, uh, applying your own laws of privacy, uh, consumer protection, and all those things that uh, are unlikely to be offered by the GTLDs. So yes, uh, that, that's, a, that's a very complicated um, situation, uh, even though when the economies of scales are very different, we are like uh, 200 times uh, smaller than the uh, biggest G uh, GTLD, and we cannot offer the same price as the GTLD. Uh, that's, that's a big issue. Thanks, Oscar. Hong Bin, you wanted to respond to uh, the IT's question? Uh, thank you, Pandy, for your question. Uh, actually, I'm very glad you mentioned about the uh, IDN issue uh, because actually in China, uh, as far as I know, uh, about 80% uh, people who cannot read the English words. Um, Actually, b because um, even they have a 
uh, some kind of uh, basic education about uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, in English, but um, as far as I know that uh, there are only 20% which who can actually speak or read uh, the English fluently. So uh, the, the problem is very serious. So if you can uh, imagine that 80% uh, of people who can only use uh, English language uh, as they, they are not in the uh, as they are not their native language to access the internet. This is uh, this is why uh, we, uh, as a large country in the um, on the internet, we only have a four, uh, forty percent internet penetration rate. Yeah, this is a very major obstacle, and uh, uh, also related to IDN issue, um, I also have a. One slight comment about um, Sarah's work and uh, her, her presentation is that we also want more support from your side mm -hmm. for, to support the IDN issue, especially related to yeah. emails. Let, let, <laughs> let me say a few words. Well, let me be more brutal, okay? <laughs> I would say that if Google had access, full access to the Chinese market, we would not have a problem with IDN email. Um, well, not you. No, I'm talking about Google, but this is this is very true, and uh, uh, it's very unfortunate that all our official um, letters to the heads of Google um, begging for the ID and full support email ended up with nothing. Uh, it's very unfortunate. So one of the great benefits of the new utility program is it um, launched IDNs. I think much more. Uh, I don't want to say fully, but there's a lot more of them, and uh, I think it brought it front and center for a lot of people, uh, companies like Amazon and VeriSign and Google and, and companies like that applied for IDNs, and that means that we can't, you know, we can't apply for an IDN and then not actually have it function in our products. And so this is a huge, this is, I'm doing outreach this week on the, just this issue. And it, believe me, it's, it's, a, it's, it's gotten a lot of attention internally. And I think we're planning on having it fully compatible by the end of the year, I think is the plan. So no, I, I totally agree with you. And especially if, they, if it doesn't work in products, then, then IDNs won't be developed. And so and it's not just our products. I think it's a lot of companies didn't realize um, what IDNs were and why they should care about them. <laughs> and I think they, they, they're really getting it a lot more now, obviously. Microsoft supports it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we see that industry is actually being reactive, which is great because, uh, you know, the region where I'm coming from has a lot, a lot of the you know, most, uh, uh, I mean, the really big number of languages. And um, even though quite a few of them can be written with the standardized ASCII, uh, uh, you know, um, the issue is we have quite a few that are right now not even, uh, not finished yet in the coding phase. So we absolutely need that to happen because we also have a region where we are about 60% only, uh, let's say, literate in the regular languages like French, English, Spanish, and others. If not, you know, a lot of times people speak other languages. So we have a question here, yeah. and uh, here, and then there. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. My name is Dweep. I'm from Indonesia. In response to your uh, question, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why it's so hard for CCTLD to compete with the GTLD, uh, I think we have to uh, again recognize that CC, uh, domain name cannot stand alone. So uh, why when uh, you give the free domain name to small business and they don't get return to extend their domain names? Because first we have to see what kind of business they are run to. And uh, if this is not really most wanted business, it's really hard for them to or compete with uh, the another business that use uh, GTLD. And then the other thing is about the ad advertisement system. Uh, in my imagination, the small business cannot afford to pay for advertis advertisement uh, through the internet. 
So although they use CCTLD, but they not really uh, familiar or not really known by customers. And then uh, in this case, uh, I hope that uh, motivation, Google motivation to have a, a CCTLD registry is not until the, uh, to give them the free domain, domain name, but also to push the advertisement to the internet. And then also uh, for the strategic for uh, CCTLD registry is uh, how to help the small business to have the um, uh, interactive uh, content like uh, those uh, CH, uh, C CH, right? Caesar. This is that Caesar, yeah. So uh, the communication uh, uh, or interaction be between the uh, the company, the business owner, with the customers, uh, because well, the domain name, domain name cannot stand alone. It's nothing. Uh, the and I am as a customers, I will look first for the value of the business rather than to the domain name. It's maybe domain name is the last thing that I saw. If the if the company advertisement is so familiar, then I I will look. Oh, what what they use? Oh, dot dot id dot com or, or dot whatever. But then when when the value or, or with the when the content of the business is not really interactive with the customer, so although we you give the free domain name, is the effect is I am sure it's really uh, it's just a, a little. Uh, impact to the domain name business itself. Thank you. Can you give it back to the back there? Thank you. Hello, my name is Gonola Asbrink, Australian IGF ambassador. And um, I want to talk about another diversity issue that may not have been raised. I came in a little bit late. Uh, and that is... Um, accessibility for people with disability. We heard in the opening ceremony from Shadi of W3C um, in regard to the web content accessibility guidelines and the impact that has on the disability community. Um, in fact, at uh, last year, uh, last week's uh, um, Australian IGF, we heard that the Australian government uh, um, has uh, a strategy to make sure all government websites are accessible. And, and that type of focus could be reflected in CCTLDs as, as a strategy of best practice. And doing that uh, not only is, is um, good social responsibility, but uh, aims to meet the market. We're talking about one billion people with disability globally and at least 15% of any country's uh, um, population. So there is a market there if more and more websites are made accessible. Thank you very much for raising that, Ambassador. And, uh, yeah, I mean, is that something that you guys do? As, um, you know, um, CCTLD uh, operators? Do you think about people with disabilities? If I, it, yeah, um, yeah, one of the things we we'll, would we'll like to have uh, do will be that with our Nduke Kalo Foundation for Internet Development. Well, it's, um, I'm Leonid Todorov. Uh, are you? Uh, it just uh, hit me that uh, you know, we actually found yet another uh, function or perspective. Uh, 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 with regard to the, uh, um, let's say, at least uh, Russia's and China's CCTLD's operation. And that's uh, expansion of their best practices uh, throughout uh, their respective regions, which is for Russia, the CIS, uh, that's the Commonwealth of Independent States, the former USSR countries, and for China, that, let's put it, the Confucius region, right? So uh, what I mean is that, uh, well, there are certainly best practices as far as um, uh, the CC, um, and the CCLD um, uh, operates. And, uh, well, I believe that uh, they are growing to some kind of nucleuses. I mean, uh, CNNIC and uh, .ru. Uh, for those regions uh, you know, with the best practices and uh, pools of expertise and knowledge for the respective nations, uh, which, I mean, an exercise which does not necessarily need uh, you know, to engage uh, any internet giant or just at least 
we can compete in that respect with them. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I heard there is a technology uh, being developed in Australia um, about um, the disabled people with like special uh, devices uh, for like blind people uh, so they can uh, actually like not see but uh, interact with, uh, with, um, with the internet and information technologies. But this thing is very, very new. I mean, this is like the very high top of the modern technology and it's not necessarily well known uh, in other countries. As far as I know, there is no special uh, programs for disabled people in Russia. It's very unfortunate, but um, I think uh, it's a matter of a few years, uh, it will become uh, you know, more visible and more, more available. Um, I think the software you're referring to is uh, NVDA, which is open source software, and uh, that is screen reading software for blind people, so that uh, anything on the screen is then relayed by um, speech output, and it very much depends on how websites are designed, if the screen reading software can actually convert that to speech and that's why uh, designing uh, according to international guidelines is so important. Um, in regard to Russia, I can't say off the top of my head um, what is happening but um, there are worldwide disability organisations and technology programs in a number of countries and, and I'll be happy to talk with you afterwards about that. Uh, thanks, Rochelle. Uh, Chuck Gomes from VeriSign. I wanted to come back to the uh, competition issue of uh, CCTLDs versus GTLDs. Uh, first of all, what we have found uh, over the years is that when new GTLDs or even existing TLDs as they expand, that the whole market benefits from that. So even in cases where you may not have a lot of marketing dollars to market your CCTLD. There is indirect benefit from the marketing that others are doing, whether it be GTLDs or, or et cetera. It, 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 in other words, the whole market expands when other GTLDs or, or even other CCTLDs are, are competing with you. So it's not just a matter of, of uh, uh, you having to do it all yourself. Obviously, marketing does come into play and it's helpful. Uh, with, with regard to competition of, uh, of a, a CCTLD versus uh, a, a .com, for example, uh, it's not always a matter of either or. So a lot of us think it's either or. What we found is there's, uh, in a lot of cases, it, they coexist very well. They may register a CCTLD and for international purposes may register uh, a GTLD or multiple GTLDs. So, uh, the, and, and the last thing I want to say is with regard to CCTLDs competing with GTLDs, we have a great amount of history on that uh, over the last 10 to 15 years. And if you're new to that, look at what some of the CCTLDs have done. Uh, they, in certain, uh, countries, uh, the CTLDs do extremely well, even better than .com, for example. They've done a very good job. So look at some of the things that they, that they have done. And uh, uh, it's, it, you don't have to look very far. You don't have to just look at developed countries either. In developing countries, some of them are doing very well. So I guess what I'm doing here is suggesting that you look at the historical trends that have happened over the last 15 years with regard to CT CCTLD growth, and there's some great examples from a, a lot of different situations. Thank you very much, Chuck. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Hiro Hota from DoJP. Uh, uh, I'd like to go back to the uh, not-for-profit versus for-profit. 
uh, in a legal sense, our organization, JPRS, is a private for-profit company with non-public stocks. Our stockholders are the organizations that represent the Japanese community in a sense, and they understand we pursue vision to contribute to the community, including social responsibility. So I believe there's no big difference from CCTLDs uh, presented here, uh, except we need to return some marginal dividend that may be necessary to persuade their stockholders. So uh, we define our mission as a contributor to the community and publish it, which is pretty much the same as those of our fellow CCTLDs. I believe this is the common situation for for-profit CCTLDs as well, if not all. <laughs> <laughs> so please do not discriminate us since we are good citizens as CCTLD registries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hirota. Um, Emily, did you want to ask something? To try to bring together the question about um, accessibility for people with disabilities and um, internationalized domain names, one thing I wanted to highlight was the the work that um, CN Nick and other CCTLD registries have been doing, developing voice uh, voice command for mobile devices, and that um, technology like that, which uh, is is actually done for one purpose, which is to prevent <laughs> to help people uh, with typing on mobile devices for um, Chinese script domains. Actually, has uh, another application for helping people with disabilities or visually impaired people to use. Thank you, Peter. The last word in 10 seconds, and I'm going to wrap up because the guys sure. are waiting I'll, for I'll us. I'll make that. Um, <laughs> for those interested in much more statistics than what you've seen on the screen earlier, please go to center.org, and the report is on our um, homepage. So it's one of the reports that you'll find below to see centr.org. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. And thank you all for coming. I think one of the things that, um, um, some of the things that uh, I think we can keep in mind from uh, this workshop is that, uh, you know, as our big placard here says, I do believe that CCTLDs are, uh, you know, uh, bridge builders. Bridge builders inside their own countries in terms of the local communities that they serve. Uh, you know, that is part of their responsibility. I think all of them said it, um, you know, for profit or not for profit, as uh, Hirota told us. And um, some of the things that um, I think all of them are doing is uh, real education around the internet. So as we've seen, you know, um, a lot of them do have quite a few people uh, that are using those domains at home. But in general, you know, um, uh, just like anywhere else, I mean, the, or in other TLDs, you know, the degree of appropriation of the internet is still very low anyway. You know, globally, relatively when we speak, there's still not yet 40% of us connected. So there's room for growth, there's room for even more uh, you know, uh, uh, awareness raising, uh, sharing be best practices by CCTLDs and being part of building this internet that we all hope, uh, you know, that carries our life and we all hope that will be secure, affordable, and, uh, you know, thanks for coming and uh, we'll see you hopefully at, uh, in 2014 with something else on CCTLDs. Thank you very much. Have a good day.